Okay, we're back, straight up, no chaser. We are live talking about divorce. Please make sure you guys call in 770-988-6461. Listen, we need you guys to call in. Call in with a comment. Call in with a question. Just call in. Don't just sit here and look at us. Call in. <laughs> you know, we're up here for a reason. So you guys call in as we're talking about uh, some real stuff. So yeah. we were talking about divorce and, I guess, you know, the part that they had played in, you know, I guess it being or becoming what it was. And uh, Candace was saying about toxic love, six mm -hmm. years. So that's six years of a relationship that you said you had plenty of reasons to walk away, mm -hmm. but you didn't walk away. But it made you feel some kind of way. Have you ever found that toxic relationships, you just fall so you deep love them, in yeah. love? You love it. It's, it's, it's like, Ooh, I, why? It's, it's, love it's like... It's like you just can't get enough. It's a it's sick a, love. It's an and then addiction, when, too. It is. It is an addiction. You, be, you can be addicted to a person. Yeah. I'm glad you never experienced that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, my reason for not experiencing it was not a good reason. I realized later on that because of my childhood, mm. because of the dysfunction and the abuse from my dad, I never really trusted a man enough to love him like that because I always expected him to, to do, do something. It. So I was, I, I realized later on in life, I was on guard all the time, mm. waiting for something. Even though I was there all of those years, as long as I could do what I did, manage everything, be yeah. in control of everything, it was no problem. It was when I wasn't in control. And I look back that I realized mm. You never gave all of yourself. You never even tried because you wow. kept, I kept waiting. So when are you going to do something and I'm going to have to, you know, leave you leave hurt you. or whatever. Yeah. And so, I, but I, I couldn't see it then. I really could not see myself then. Wow. But later on, I realized I, I was never, I never really loved. Wow. No problem. <laughs> Okay, so what did you, when did you realize, oh, what was your part? Um, my part would be putting him in a place he shouldn't have been, making him my God. Um, just, you know, he, he could have all of me, like whatever he needed, money, time. Like, I just wanted to be around him. Because we had, we had spent a lot of time together regardless of what he had did. And I didn't know that he did it. So we spent a lot of time together. And, um, you know, we were in love with each other. So I thought, but then I, when I found that, I was like, so I was just in love with you? Like, what part of me did you, what part of you did you give me? Because I gave mm -hmm. him all of me. Wow. 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 Yeah. From a male's perspective, Pastor, since you're sitting here, <laughs> from a male's perspective, yeah, just tell us about divorce and how, wow. you know, what is it that a man, what, what makes um, I, I heard a man say uh, one time that I was counseling that he couldn't forgive his wife, although he had cheated before. Mm -hmm. But he could not forgive his wife because he felt like it was like his car, that it was violated. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And it was like, he said, my car got broken into one time. He said it was never the same. I never wanted it like that anymore. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm having the same encounter with my wife. Wow. So men think and process different. We forgive a yeah. hundred times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they don't forgive um, like that. No. I mean, what would make a man stay um, outside of kids? I mean, it would it would really be, um, it would have to be love. I mean, if it's, mm -hmm. is he really in love with her like that? Um, I, think, I think some men, the reason why they process that way, that they could do something and then if the lady do it, then it's totally different because most men look to women to, they may not admit it, but to, to affirm them, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. when you do something, then you're like, you know, you're damaging that. Now you've really affected me to the core because there's a certain part of me that I gave you mm -hmm. that, you know, that encouraged me. You know, there's a certain part of, of you that I depended on to, to keep me lifted up, to keep me going. Uh, so I think um, wow. some men kind of, you know, make, 
I don't want to say make them their mother, but it's it's a it's a it's a certain affirmation that I yeah, believe that definitely. women have, and that's why men will process that way. But then again, you have men that get married, and uh, they'll get married with in mind certain levels of commitment that they'll do, and there's a certain level they won't go beyond. Hmm. So you know, um, not to say that's your case, but I think that there was a certain level of commitment that he was willing to give. Beyond that, he wasn't going to do. You know, and that's why you know um, hmm. it's not good to really rush into hmm. relationship hmm. or into marriage. You have to really get to know because uh, men men process that way emotionally. They are not as attached as they need to be, or as they're supposed to be. Um, then you factor in. You know, um, growing up, you factor in, um, you know, how many, is, and, and George is bad for this, but how many, you know, women to men ratio that's always talked about. So mm -hmm. some men, you know, have that in mind. Okay, well, you know, why, why commit all the way when there's a whole field of women? There's, there's a lot of options. So, um, I don't know, I mean, marriage is great, but a lot of men are not mature enough to be married. You know, they're not mature for marriage. They're mature for relationship, but not for a committed marriage. Mm. Mm. Um, how do you know if he's committed for, how can a woman have a general idea? That women, if you're listening, please listen carefully to this. So how can you tell if a man is committed for marriage or committed far enough just for a relationship? By the... um by what extent he'll go. Meaning, um, some men that'll introduce you to their parents, that's not enough. Now, a man that'll make you know further plans as far as like credit and things of that nature, then that's different. Now you're digging into something more personal, something that, that could possibly have longevity. So there are certain things that they'll allow you to, to be exposed to, but it's just surface, it's temporary. You know, when a man really goes deep, then you know that you know that's, that's, that's marriage potential. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, some men will let you in partially, and some will just let you in all the way. But again, a man will know if he's if he's ready for marriage or not. Men know that. Men yeah. know that. So you know? don't get to the place where you think that uh, the meeting the family like it used to be That's not always is a way. sign no. because the family meets the family <laughs> meets women every other day. Right. I have a brother. <laughs> So we met girls every other day that thought they were the one because they were coming to meet the family. Mm -hmm. And the family has to keep that secret. Mm -hmm. You know, unlike yeah. myself, I didn't keep the secret. I was a baby, <laughs> so I told. Even, I did. even being introduced to your children, I mean, that's, that's oh not gosh. unnecessary. You know, oh, he loves me and he's for me. No, that's not the case. Again, that's just surface stuff. Wow. You're not getting anything that that, that another no woman wouldn't get. So you have mm -hmm. to look at what is he doing that I know for certain that most women would not have this type of access. Mm -hmm. Then you can start breaking down, you know, and kind of narrowing down what kind of person he is. But and it's I mean it's it's just it's a game. It's very unfortunate, but it's a major game. Wow, wow. <laughs> it's a game. It's, it's a game. Chess. You know, mm -hmm. it's a game. Yeah. All right. Seven seven zero nine eight eight sixty four sixty one. Call in. Call in. We'd like to hear you chime in on these comments. Yeah, some of you men who are guilty of this call in. <laughs> <laughs> so we can, you know, dialogue about this thing. Let's help our ladies out. <laughs> okay, let's talk about image and stigma and shame of divorce. And you know, I think a lot of people want to get divorced. But the image of it makes them stay, and they can't do it. We are separate rooms. We don't do anything together. But we want to keep up an image of that. So tell me about the image of what you went through and the stigma that you, you know, occurred, incurred after, you know, you exposed it. Because there's so many things and I think I said last week that goes on before we get to the place of divorce. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't say, okay, I woke up today and decided to divorce you. There's so many things that have led up to that mm -hmm. decision right. that we kept secret. Right. And so everybody's like, not them. Mm -hmm. No, but there's so many things 
that have happened so, to lead up to that. Hold on to that. We actually have a caller. Caller. Right. Who's bold enough? <laughs> <laughs> hold on, DJ. Hold on for one second. Hello? All right. Caller, you there? Hello? Do you, y'all can hear me? Absolutely. We can hear you loud and clear. Okay, this this kind of this the old freeze. All How right. How y'all doing tonight? Doing well in yourself? Okay. I'm doing good. I had plugged in, so I'm glad I'm on the right line. You're doing part two from divorce. Yes, My sir. question would be to those that are divorced. After you got divorced and yeah, you wasn't no longer with your person, no with did you look person. at them and ever at ask God, oh, was that the right God, choice? The right choice. Okay, after you were divorced, did you ever see God right. and ask him, was it the right choice to begin with? That was the first thing I did. Right. I don't think you have that to seek God. I think you know, know all along. Right, right. I, I, I didn't seek him, but I say, you know, God, I messed up, didn't I? You know, that was the first thing, you know, because when stuff go wrong, <laughs> You know, and you know, because I kept saying, why would, number one, God is not going to say, marry somebody that's going to get on drugs, they're going to mess up your whole life. He's not going to do that. And so that was the first thing I said was, I did, I clearly didn't hear you because when we were married, I didn't get saved. I mean, I wasn't saved when we got married. I got saved after we were married. Mm-hmm. And so I was saved and he wasn't. But I was still trying to make the marriage work. Well, at that point, I was fighting a losing battle. Hmm. But do you agree that you had flags anyway? Yeah. I did. Can we all agree I that did. there I did. was flags and you knew we shouldn't have did that? But <laughs> we wanted to prove <laughs> everybody my wrong. Yes. I, don't, I, I, yeah. I don't think anybody <laughs> got went into a marriage that didn't have flags. Mm-hmm. They ignored them. Absolutely. Or just did what they wanted to do. I just did what they wanted to do. I mm-hmm. thought they could love them enough to change them. Yeah. 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 Well, we thank you, Carla. We thank appreciate you, you opening that answer to your question. Okay. Thank you. Ready to see you on that. Yes, sir. You too. Okay. I, I, I truly believe that. Um, yeah. You know, there's a lot of red flags and you ignore it. And there's one thing you were saying prior to that caller coming in. And um, um, the thing about it is that by the time a woman is left, men were, were way behind. It's way, way too late by the time it's real to us. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you guys are gone mentally, emotionally. Oh, yeah. So by the time you physically get ready to leave, only then is it a light bulb oh, goes okay. off on our head. But um, because men just, it's unfortunate, but they don't, they don't process that way. You know, yeah. um, I think the biggest the biggest blow to a man and why they won't divorce is because regardless of how much they cheat, how much the woman has done, whatever they've done, it's failure. A man does not want to feel like he failed. Mm. So he'll stay into something wow. and to keep the face of it because he doesn't want to accept defeat. And that's how it appears. It, you know, not to say it is a game, but <clears throat> it becomes that. So they won't do divorce because it would suggest that they fail. Did they fail because they were cheating or did they fail because they didn't try? Or I know men that'll walk away. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, okay, so you walked away. So that's different. But do men stay because I don't know, do they stay because they they don't want everybody to know that they failed the relationship? If they're the blame, mm-hmm. do they stay? If mm-hmm. they're the blame, but if they're not the blame, it's easier for them to walk away. Or if somebody else, why is it that when somebody else comes along, that's when they wake up? Mm-hmm. When another woman comes when along. When another woman comes mm-hmm. along, or, you know, to me, that's the time that a man wakes up. And I agree mm-hmm. with you. Mm-hmm. By that time, because women are not, women don't fall in love and give themselves just for lust. Mm-hmm. It's not like she's mm-hmm. having a relationship um, just to have a relationship. Men do that. By the time a woman, a real woman, gives herself, mm-hmm. you know, or, or you know, you know, we, let me go back to before I was saying, by the time I cheated, I was gone emotionally. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. I lost my train of thought. But you already gone emotionally <laughs> because it's so much has happened. So there's nothing you can really do to get me back because mm-hmm. I've already left you. Yeah. I didn't leave you in, in that relationship. The physical relationship solidified that you lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, you know, the mm-hmm. physical aspects of a woman giving herself, especially in marriage most of the time, she's not playing around just to play around. Not at all. Right. Most of the time with a woman, when she's playing around, she's playing to win. Right. Men play around to, it's, just, it's sexual, it's physical most of the time control. because they're controlled, it's their eyes. But a woman, um, she's playing to win. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why you see ferocious women. Have you ever seen them by any means oh, yes. necessary? Yes. Mm-hmm. They don't care about you and you and it's just by any means necessary. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes when a man when another woman comes in and the man leaves, for me, it's almost like like you say, he already wanted to go. But he wouldn't say he wanted to go. He already had issues. And now she becomes a justifiable reason because now she'll help him. Mm-hmm. Say, well, you know, this is because he can talk to her. And she's going to help him and say everything he needs to hear. And then when he hears it, then he'll go back and, well, you don't cook. You don't wash. You don't do this. You know, and it, it was never that. He never wanted to marry her in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And before he tells her, I just didn't want to marry you. You pressured me. You pushed me or whatever. Then he starts to look for reasons. And this other woman comes in and she helps give him the reasons that he needs. Wow. That's that's good. That's good. I I know we got off of something. (laughs) I know we were talking about the stigma of divorce. what, What was the shame? And I'm going to get back to that. Were you shamed, you know, or did the church, because everybody mm-hmm. was in church, everybody mm-hmm. was in church on this panel, um, was there shame, was there a stigma that came against, against you, your friends, you know, for me, family? For me, it was the church mm-hmm. and family, um, because everybody kept saying that you're so supposed to be saved and I didn't understand what they had to do with me divorcing him I'm not happy you know he's on drugs and I don't understand what my salvation has to do with that but then all of a sudden my salvation is in question because now I'm divorced you know and then family is saying you can't make it you know and so now all of a sudden you can't make it but I've been working throughout the marriage and I I make good money but no it was always him and then it got to the point to where he was up here and I was down here and I didn't understand what happened wow. you know so it was I started to feel bad like I had actually done something wrong because I stood up to say, no, I, I'm not going to put up with this. Mm, great point. But it was a church and the mm. church people. Great wow. point. Miss, Miss, Miss Candace. I remember being very embarrassed because like in, I said in the beginning, like, you know, everybody I knew was getting married. Well, these people were still married, so, you know, <laughs> they still married and they, they look pretty good. You know, things look pretty good. And it's like, man, I'm suffering. <laughs> and so, you know, when when I finally, you know, decided to, you know, to, to break up, I was so embarrassed. I mean, I, I felt like a failure. I felt like I immediately was less than. I, I was embarrassed to see people. Fortunately, I had moved. But I remember being afraid that when I would come back to town, I would see people. Mm. I re- remember, you know, wearing my rings. After the divorce, mm-hmm. because I didn't want to look like an unwed mother mm-hmm. to people that didn't know me. And then I remember every time someone would ask me, people that hadn't seen me in a long time from back home, I remember just feeling like, just naked, like, how's, you know, because they had an image of my life, you know, mm-hmm. that it should have been a certain way. And I'm like, my life is nothing like that. And then financially, you know, it was a choice, and because of my choices before that, 
you know, I, I put myself in a place of poverty. So you're looking at your friends and you got, they're living in bigger houses and they have bigger cars. And mm. I remember taking my kids out of activities because I couldn't afford it. And so their kids, you know, and even now you're like, man, your kid is excelling in this thing. I took my kids out years ago because I couldn't pay for it. Mm -hmm. So all of that, it was very shame. I was very embarrassed. I was very, I felt like I had lost value as a person. Validation. So mm -hmm. what, about, what about you, Miss Ebony? Um, I felt more ashamed with my parents because I would stand up for him. I, you couldn't talk about him. Don't say nothing bad about him. I don't care what he did. Um, so I felt more ashamed with my parents than I did the church. Um, and then, you know, the little voices in my head, I would, because I had talked to you, I was like, oh, she think I'm stupid. Or just everybody, <laughs> because those that did know that I was married, I'm like, they probably think I'm stupid. If they, but they don't even know. So I'm going through all these conversations in my mind, in my head, and you just want to tuck your head and just be like, uh, but then, you know, I didn't, sometimes I didn't feel that ashamed coming into church because I am so young, so people don't really think that I was married or went through that. Yeah. That's true. So is it uh, fair to say that to some degree marriage validated us as women? Yes. To some degree it validated <laughs> yeah, even though you were suffering. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. It's still, you know, was in that club. You know? yeah. it's still in the club. Wow. Yeah. I, think, I think for some men, too, there's a certain level of validation also. Um, because, you know, it, it, it shows other men that you were able to, you know, kind of mature quicker in a sense. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you were able to, um, out of all of these options, to narrow down to the one. You know what I'm saying? So... That kind of separates you from a lot of men that are just out there, you know, playing the field. So there's a certain level of validation there, too. So how did you know your wife was the one? You. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. How did you know? I knew you were the one? Yes. Well, uh, let's see. You know what? Our story is a little different because we were actually in the church. You know, and uh, I knew you was watching me. You know what? Oh, but, but but to be honest with you, um, I mean, it it was it was God to be. I mean, to be honest, because um, after the whole divorce in in my first marriage, I prayed to God specifically for the type of woman that I wanted. And, you know, when I met you and, you know, after we, after I was able to move beyond the pastor part and to kind of get to know you, that was it. I mean, everything down to the T. And I've never experienced anything like that, but everything that I prayed for specifically down to the last thing, you know, that's exactly who you are. Wow. That's what God presented. Wow. So um, I knew then. Yeah, I knew then. I asked you that, not because I wanted you to, like, flatter me, but thank you for that. <laughs> but anyway, I asked because I want, you know, you know, women to know and even men to know that there's, you will know, you know, once everything, the smoke, the glitz, the glam mm -hmm. is gone, I think you will know uh, who this person is and if this person is who you want to spend the rest of your life with. And I think that's what happened the first time. Not to take anything from her because I'm not trying to bash her, but um, you know, I just I just felt like she was that person. You know what I mean? Um, and again, this is no disrespect. There was nothing special, meaning something out of the ordinary that she was or that she did. It's just, I just felt like she was the one that, um, you know, I would really like to live life with her. And that was the process. And so, yeah. Okay. Okay, what happens when your family still deals with the other person or the ex? Or what if your family never agreed with your current? Oh, wow. Oh, mercy. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. So they still deal with the ex and they don't, you know, make it easy for the current. Hmm. Anybody had any experience in that? Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. 
so okay. Well, I, I, mean, I experienced I that. Yes, I did experience that. You accepted that. immediately? Oh, like, no. My my dad did not like him. <laughs> there were <laughs> problems from the beginning. <laughs> so I didn't experience that. So once they found out what happened, it was like, mm, I don't need to talk to him. I already didn't like him. So Did you get married without your parents? Yes. Mm. Oh, they didn't know you got married. No. Oh. <laughs> and that was a sore spot, too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Well, that'd be hard for them to get over. Yeah. That, that would be hard. So, yeah. Well, anybody with my family, anybody that came after my ex just wasn't good. And they made it known. And they made it very hard to the point of pulling away from me and separating themselves from me. So... Because I, 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 I asked my mom, I said, but I'm still your daughter. You don't have to like my choices and people, but you still have to love me as your daughter. But she couldn't. Wow. She couldn't separate the two. So. I, I can see that. Nobody makes the cut after that guy. Right, right. After but that person, person nobody. Kidding. No, I didn't experience that. Um, my family, you know, I don't know. You know, they're loving. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, my ex can still come around. But you're in an interracial. Your your inter marriage was yeah, interracial. Was we got to bring white, that out. A white guy, not an Asian. He was white. <laughs> 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 my kids ain't blazing, but um, yeah, you know, if if he, whenever he would come around, and even when things weren't great between us, um, I can I, my I don't know my situation. I can honestly say my my mom and my my stepfather were really saved, and so even when reconciliation didn't appear to be possible, mm -hmm. they never made him feel awesome. any kind of way. You know, because they knew those were their grandkids' dad, and as long as he wasn't unfit, you know, they were fine. So, you know, I didn't, they didn't choose between us, but they helped to make it less awkward. Mm -hmm. Well, what I about his say, family? I don't have anything at all to do with his family. Um, I think I'm Facebook friends with a couple of cousins. Um, but after our marriage ended, there was there was there was nothing nothing at all. I don't know that he's in a lot of contact with his family, but absolutely I'm not. not no contact with you, the kids, nothing. No, not at all. So sometimes in divorce, you just don't divorce the person. They divorce the, the whole, whole fam. family. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that that's true. That's that kind of mm -hmm. happened to me. Old family divorce, and then your family still married to them. Right. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. So that kind of makes it difficult because mm -hmm. your family still married, are still content, still um, in relationship, whereas that person's family t can totally cut, cut you, you off. off. Mm -hmm. No yep. anything, no mm -hmm. hellos, mm -hmm. no anything. So that's that's really interesting and let's talk about it as we get ready to close out just the dynamics of church and feeling not saved and how the church can make us feel you know um inadequate um and I just want to encourage every divorcee woman and this is why we wanted to do the show and man that you are accepted by God you are loved and that it's possible and you can be loved again if that's your choice mm -hmm. to be married again if that is your choice and um, shame on the church for making people that are divorced not have a voice because we have we'll put a divorced person immediately in a single category. Mm -hmm. But I found that a divorced person is not necessarily in a single category mm -hmm. because they're no longer married. That's, right. That's a category all by That's itself. Right. Would y'all agree? Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and they feel left out because now you're making me fit in to as though I never was. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 
Especially when you got kids. Now. Especially when you got kids. I, I mean, I feel, I don't know. I mean, I feel especially with children, everything is different. Everything's, you know. I, I would, I don't call myself single. I don't call myself anything. <laughs> and I, I wouldn't say I'm single because I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not in single. this. In the, I'm not one alone. You know what I mean? I'm not. Every every life choice is that's a consideration. Unlike being, you know, truly like alone. So that's good. I mean, that's a good point. I didn't, I didn't, I hadn't factored that in like that. So that's actually pretty good that you guys are even say that there's a difference between you know single and divorce because in the man's mentality. Divorce means single. Single. Free. Divorce means single. So. Did you find, uh, Miss Jackie, that when you got divorced, that it was, you felt some kind of way? Even with the church, because they do categorize. And they put you back in a category as though you never were. I did. I, I felt some kind of way because here I am now a single mom and I'm being categorized as single but treated as something totally different, hmm. if that makes any sense. I wasn't treated as single, but I was categorized as single and it's confusing, you know, because you're saying, well, what am I? Where do I fit in? You know, and then the church you can only do certain things because you're now single, but yet you're not single. And I mean, it was just so confusing that, you know, you, you're, I was made to feel like you can't do anything. God is not pleased. No. He's not going to use you. He, he still loves you because he has to, <laughs> but that's about the extent of it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so there you are, okay. you know? So... Lastly, we got about two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. I want to give everybody about 30 seconds um, to talk to me about, although everything you went through, the hard, the nightmares, did you still go through grief? Mm -hmm. I went through grief because divorce means to divide by force. Although you know it's the right thing, it's not a mentally easy thing for me. You know, even walking away and walking out, you you crying, knowing that you're glad that it's over, but there's a part of you that dreams and plans and future plans and Christmases and children growing up together, coming to your house, growing old together, all of that. Went down the grade. So tell me about your 30 second grief process. Okay. For me, um, I think I grieved during the process of me coming to the reality of you're going to have to get a divorce. Mm, and that's when my grief, I grieved when I discovered he was on drugs. I grieved when he stole. I grieved when he took from my kids. I grieved then. So by the time I came to the decision of this is it, I didn't know how to feel. I think I was just like all cried out. That's good. I think I did grieve. I remember crying, going to the lawyer's office. Um, but I think for me, the grief was prolonged. And I think it shows <clears throat> up at inopportune times. And you find, I find I'm still, not that I want that, but just that life is so altered. And it's not what I wanted. And so to have to always make adjustments, sometimes, you know, I still feel like it's fresh because mm. of that. Mm. Mm. Wow. That's good. Um, that's good, both that's, ladies. That's good. Yeah, I still I still feel like I'm going through the grieving. Um, I'm out of the denial stage, <laughs> but I do feel like I'm in, like, the anger stage. Like, it's kind of up and down. Sometimes I, I feel bipolar. Like, I'm like, I feel crazy at times. Um, and then sometimes I feel, okay, like, I know this was the right thing, but I'm still mad because at times I feel like I wasted time. Wow. 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 That's good. That's, that's good. You know, that's, that's, that's so good. Bipolar, you know, 
You know, and it, it, it is because you're up and down. You want it, you don't want it. I should do it, I shouldn't do it. I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna leave. It, it's it's some an emotional roller coaster. It just doesn't slide out of it like that. So, um, we thank you all for joining in tonight. Divorce, thank you, thank I survived, you. You. and so we thank every lady on the panel: Miss <laughs> Jackie, Miss Candice. You know, Pastor Nick, Ms. Rhonda, Ebony. Ms. Ebony. So we just thank everyone for sharing their story, for being open, being transparent. We pray that it helped you tonight mm -hmm. and um, pray that you would uh, tune in next week. Next week, this same time, Wednesday, 7 to 8 p.m. You can catch us right here at 108praiseradio.com. Uh, follow us, follow the station, doing great things, going great places. Uh, straight up, no chaser. Again, you can catch us right here. If you cannot catch us here uh, online, you can always come to the church uh, personally, Restoring the Years, yes. Global Ministries, 1000 mm -hmm. Cobb Parkway, North Sweet C, Marietta, Georgia, 30062, Friday night service, Sunday morning service. Guarantee you'll be blessed. You can also catch us here um, on live preaching the word on Sunday morning. So 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Amen. So we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Lord willing, say the same. Straight up, no chaser. I'm your host, Pastor Nick. 